today we have to go get my Piper Apache Geronimo, which is the cheapest twin engine airplane in the USA when I bought it a year ago. Yeah, we uh, the lease ran out on the hangar that we're in because we were only supposed to be there for 30 days, and well, that was three months ago. However, you know, I mean, why did it take so long? Well, that's buying broken celebrity airplanes and, you know, seven other airplanes and just being not very good with my time. However, uh, we have to get it out today. It's coming out whether it's done or not. So we have to put it all back together, fly it over to Phil's hangar, finish up a few uh, small repairs and get it all done for its new owner that's coming in two weeks. We have a crazy amount of work that we gotta get done today. To get this done, we've got the whole crew coming out plus a new guy. That's right, I know, another new guy. We'll see if he sticks around longer than four hours. And we still gotta fly the thing today, which is, you know, crash test dummy day. Uh, it's airworthy, safe, you know, we won't take off without that, but uh, still, <sighs> yes. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? 180 horsepower. Now that's 360 cubic inches. Think about that for a minute. That's the one thing that blows me away about airplane engines. Way different than car engines. This would normally be like a small block Chevy, you know, 350 cubic inch, putting out like 300 horsepower. Whereas this one, four cylinder, but the size of the pistons are huge. They're big block Chevy size. They're massive, like four to five inches in diameter. And that's because it only needs to turn less than 3000 RPM because it can't go any faster than that because those prop tips, as they spin around the speed, if they go faster than the speed of sound, it basically causes the air to cavitate and then you no longer are producing thrust. So we have to limit how fast the RPM of the engine turns to limit the speed of the propeller blade tip up there. As that moves up and back, controls how that propeller goes forward and backwards like that, which controls the RPM of the engine. Yeah, it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to have just a hole in it like that. We had to go get these, switch them out. That's what Dr. Phil is working on on the other side. And I think that's all that we need to do before we fly this out of here and get it done. Hey, Dr. Phil, you got, uh, oh yeah, here's one. Oh, there's the new one and the old one. So you see the new one has holes that are just round and the old one has holes that are round and long, not supposed to be there. So yeah, that's uh, that's the ones we got to put on there. Dr. Phil just uh, showed me this right here. I figured you guys get a kick out of that. Take a look at that bolt. See the wear on that bolt? That's not supposed to be like that. Rather than rotate it, look at that. And then he showed me that. Uh, yeah, it's got a little angle angle action happening. Um, you just ground it down instead of rotating the bracket around to get the correct angle on things. Hey, 65 down. years worth of a bunch of other mechanics working on it. What could possibly go wrong? Right, Dr. Phil? Absolutely. He, he's got it. Hey, Grizzly's here. What's up, Chris? How you doing? How you doing? Not Say bad. Hi to all the YouTube world. Hi, YouTube. Long time no see. I know. I know. Have you done something different with your hair? Mm, no. It looks nice. Did you get a haircut? No. No? The opposite. <laughs> That's right. Are we ready to see this thing finally fly out of here after, well, like three months now? Yeah, because then I don't have to come back up here and work on it no more. That's true. It took us about two hours to get here. Yeah. And then it's going to take about two hours to get home. Yeah. Well, you. I'm gonna be flying this, hopefully. And hopefully it's only gonna be about 12 minutes for me. Yeah, well, we're gonna figure out a way to make it longer. Yeah, that's true. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Grizzly, good job. 
Yes. He just pointed out the whole reason we're gonna do a super duper good pre-flight inspection because he just found we're missing a cotter pin on that bolt and the other one down there. So we definitely need to have that stuff on there before we go flying. Good catch. And we're locked in forever. Let's take a look around the old girl here and see what we're dealing with. No step. Some paint missing here. Uh, that's fine. I call that our speed mod. I'm, I'm gonna be polishing this part. No. Flaps here. Checking. That's good. We've already brought this up to full. Lock. Lock. Perfect. We'll come back to the fuel and the oil. We'll, we'll do that next. And now I'm just looking at all these screws right here. Because, uh, you know, I don't want to end up on somebody else's YouTube channel because we had to put it down in a field or something like that. So we're just going to make sure we double, triple, quadruple check everything. Um, yep, that looks normal. We're fine. Ta-da! Battery is right inside there. Let's take a look. You spin me right round. Wing that right round. Now just don't drop it down in there. It disappears down into the abyss. Okay, checking that that is tight and that is tight over there and they're not rubbing or touching any metal stuff that they're not supposed to be. Okay, that's good. I like it, I like it. All right, that one over there, good, I like it. We got the one with only round holes in it. Now, let's give it a check, make sure there's no binding of this rod right here. So I'm gonna hop inside there, roll it back, and then go forward while a Grizzly or uh, somebody is out here watching so that we have full travel and we are gonna be safe, safe to go. You ready, Grizz? Sure. All right, now. Yep. Okay, coming back. I'm gonna go all the way back to full feather. I'm on the stop here. All right, and go all the way back. Okay. Going all the way up, full RPM. I am all the way full here. All right, go ahead and cycle it one more time. Coming back to feather. I am on feather stop here. Okay, and then go ahead and go all the way back one more time. Full RPM. I am full RPM here. All right. Did we get to stop the stop on that? So there's actually only one stop on this guy. Um, and it looks like the rod is what's being the stop for uh, full feather. Okay. And then we have full, uh, full RPM is the actual stop on the housing itself. Is um, it hitting the full RPM stop? Correct, yeah. Oh good, okay. So we'll have to confirm with Dr. Phil on that one, but from everything over here, as far as the interference was concerned, it looks pretty good. Nice. Oh, yes, please. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Making some jet noises. boys and girls we'll get there soon now here's something that's kind of funky and quirky about this thing this is the reservoir for the hydraulic system for the gears and flaps and what you do is you pull this cap off you fill it up like this and then in order to make sure it's full you gotta have the gears all down and the flaps extended and you fill it up and then you go like this whoop, till it pours out and then you lift it back up fill it up pour it out fill it up pour it out and that's how you know it's topped off kind of weird but that's how it's supposed to go and this down here you can't really see that in there is the brakes so that 
is an old school, really old reservoir. Let's see if we can see down in there. Can you see in there? Now it's time to check the brakes. Let's get in here. And you'll notice on this side, the top are the brakes and no brakes on that side. Brakes, no brakes. Trust, passenger. Let's check. Ooh, those still feel really good. Oh, I am pleased. Yay. That is a good sign. Nice, solid brakes. These are better than it was before. Before, you had to pump the crap out of it in order to get that side over there to hold. And now, it feels pretty good. I like it. I don't think I've ever given you guys a full tour of this cockpit. You have your USB chargers there. You got the quartz chronometer right there, which is used for instrument flying and holding patterns and such. You don't ever want to see that light coming on. That means it just had a really bad day. That's your trans, your beacon, your trouble thing that you crashed. You don't want you don't want that light to be on ever. This is our fancy audio panel, PS Engineering, probably the best audio panel producer there is. Old school KX155. These are your uh, your communication on this side and your navigation on this side, and these correspond. Where you at? Down there. To these down here, all three of them. So this one's the primary one that we use. That's the number one. The line going like this tells you if you're on track. That line right there is for approaches to tell you if you're on the correct heights coming into land. So if the line is up, that means you're too low and you gotta pull back and steer toward the line. If it's too low, you're too high and you gotta drive toward the line. So that is that one on that one right there. This one right here operates that one, so it only tells you if you're going in the right direction or not. Sorry. I'm working out here. Sorry, I'm working here. See, don't move that. You gotta get up. There you go, thank you. I'm not afraid of you, old man. No, I am. I'm sorry, I love you, Dr. Phil. Whoops, don't touch that. He's working on it. Moving down here, this is basically just a museum piece that operates that thing right there that nobody ever uses anymore. It's just in here to, you know, for weight and balance. These right here are your turn ons and go fasters. It's a key, turn all the way that way, fires it up, turn it that way, it fires it up. These are your, uh, get some go juice pumps to it. Your lights, your landing lights, and that is a turn and bank right there, which is that right there which is electric boogie woogie woogie so it has a gyro in there that spins real fast that way when your plane goes it tells it if it's flying in coordinated flight if that is off to one side or the other it's flying through the air like this or like this instead of nice and straight on how it's supposed to fly so that's how you know that what else is in here down here oh yeah we have all of our breakers. We have our breakers. All of them need to be in. And then there's some under here. Can you see that? I can Yeah, there you go. You can see those under there now. They need to be in. Yep. Okay. Well, let's see engine gas temperature, how hot the exhaust is, all for your mixture and power settings. That tells you where you're going. That tells you, you know, up or down. And that tells you blue is good, brown is bad. That, how high we know that. We have this very optimistic speedometer. Yeah, it normally stays right about there. That's about as fast as you can get this thing. <laughs> In this engine, you have one engine here, your fuel, and then the right engine there. And it sucks. And on this one, they split out the RPMs, where on the 310, these are together, 
similar to this where it has needles over top of each other that move so you can keep them in sync. And on this one, the RPMs are split on this one, which I'm not a fan of, if I'm honest. Vacuum to operate this one and that one. Those two are vacuum operated, also gyroscopic, which means there's a vacuum pump right Where's that on this one? There it is, the two big hoses going right there. Oop, right there. That's the vacuum pump that operates these two. Gyroscopic, spinny fast. And this is how you measure those pumps. There's one on the other engine as well. Outside, uh, I think this is carb temperature. Yeah, this is your carburetor air temperature. Tells you what the temperature of the air going into your carburetor is. That's important for uh, making sure you don't get ice. Anything else? Oh, these switches down here. Then you have your pitot heat, your pitot, and your flashy strobe heat down there. Or strobe heat, strobe light down there. Your gas, your props, your mixtures. Three green are always good. That's a light when everything is up. Whenever you get too cold on the carburetor, what we were just looking at, pull this out, it adds heat to the carburetor. This is flaps because it looks just like a flap. That's pretty neat. And that one's a wheel, a gear, because it looks like a tire. Ha! And this is your holy crap handle. Pull that thing out and get ready to pump like crazy on takeoff if things go wrong. And if they go really bad, you got this one. You lift that little jewel up right there and you yank on this sucker for everything you got and it blows the gear down and it's staying down. So that's that's when everything truly goes south and you got to get the gear down. Yeah, you don't you don't want to use that ever if you don't have to. And down below, we got more switches for your alternators, your power switch, and these are for the comfort for air coming into the cabin. And that is a tour. Almost forgot that side more USB chargers, your ADSB that tells the government where you're at, and cylinder head temperatures that tell you if you're getting ready to uh, buy another engine. So that's good. There you go. That is a tour of the cockpit of this 1957 Apache. Golly Gomer, I keep forgetting things. There's the whole fuel tank management system over here. Old school primer, like you see on a lawnmower. Then you have what's called cross feed, which I'll talk about that in a second. You have your main tank up here. So that little bar would go up here for your main and then go all the way back for your auxiliary tank, only in level flight. This is to turn fuel on to the heater, which this airplane, we took the heater out of it because it was just gonna kill you. Uh, so yeah, level flight only. They're not kidding about that because I've done that in a descent and the engine cut off and it was scary as crap. And fuel. <laughs> Cross feed. So what you can do with this, is you can actually take those gas tanks and feed that engine. And you can take those gas tanks and feed that engine over there. So you make sure your fuel burn is the same on all of them and make sure that um, if you had an engine out, and for whatever reason you were running out of fuel or some some issue came up where you had to feed that tank, you have the ability to feed the opposite side with this little lever right here. That's also the issue that happened on the blue tarp special that those lines were crossed. It had, the cross feed was the main feed and the main feed was the cross feed on the other engine and that's why it wouldn't stay running from its own gas tank so we flopped those around and she was good to go i think that's everything in the airplane oh i lied except for this up here you have your trim on the ceiling your nose you want to go down is the big lever you want to go right and left is the little lever and this tells you how far right and left you've got adjusted ah couple little lights and the lights are red in these airplanes not bright 
so that at night it just glows over the instrument so you can see that and still be able to see outside without your eyes getting all weird. There you go. You know it's a good airplane when you got Home Depot stuff happening. Look at that door latch. Bam. Yes, because that's not off a screen door. We're getting close. Now, time to turn the fuel main, main, and let's go check it. Get under here, make sure we're not leaking anywhere. And that is called a gascalator, which I don't know why they call it that. It's a fuel bowl. I'm gonna check it, make sure. Oh yeah, lots of good fuel. Inner shot glass. That looks good. No stuff, but nice and blue. Perfect. Let's go check the other side. We're getting closer. That's what I'm talking about. P51, baby. What's up? That's gonna happen soon. All right, boys. Yay, we are getting the cowling on here. It's about ready to, I don't want to say do or die time because I don't, I don't want that on me. But, uh, you know, about ready to make some noise. Well, boys, we're ready to drag this thing out. Fired up for the first time since we did all this maintenance on it. Always the scariest part because, frankly, we're about to find out if we missed anything. Let's pull it out and see how this goes. Hey, before I fly it, I'm switching shirts. We're gonna go with my Gump shirt. That's the 310 on there, but it was in that airplane that I just about bellied it up when I forgot to put the gears down uh, on my check ride, as a matter of fact. So we're gonna switch shirts and go with the old Gump's check shirt to make sure nothing crazy happens on this flight. All right, boys, time to push the doors back. I think we should be clear on this side. Good. Pulling out, we got our tow bar on. We're clear on that side. Do a general check, make sure all the tools are off of the wings. This may or may not go. Okay, no tools on the wings. Needs a bath. Spinners are on. It's nice and dirty. Okay, all right. All right, okay, clear the back. Make sure nothing's gonna be in the way of the tail coming out. Yeah, looks good on both yep, sides. Yep, we're not tied down anymore. We are clear on this side. Woohoo! Ready to pull it out now? No. 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 I got a band aid. You got a band aid? Oh, you got owie. Ooh. First blood. If you ever wanted to know, how many books and manuals go with an old airplane? There you go. We got a book from the beginning to the end. All those old ones are when it was new back in 1957, all the way through the new ones right there. Whoo wee. All right, what's the over and under? Do you think that we're gonna be good to go and fly on down there, Phil? Absolutely, it's hot potato. You, you do? I do. Hands? What do you think? It's hot potato. It's gonna start, it's gonna fly. It's gonna land, it's gonna be just fine. That's, it's, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? All right, what do you think, Jesse? You got a real good chance. Real good I, chance. I see nothing wrong here. No? No, she just needs a bath, other than that, she's good to go. That's she's right, there you go. Hey, All right, what do you guys think? My gut tells me we're gonna be just fine because this is just a workhorse. It's always been ugly, but it's always worked. Throw in the comments, what do you guys think? Over and under, are we gonna have any issues before we take off? Or are we gonna be able to hit the sky? Let's lock the baggage compartment, hop in, fire it up. Outside, we did our walk around, closed passenger brief. Hey, don't do anything stupid. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's on the takeoff, perfect. Electrical equipment is off. All right. Breakers are in, underneath. Checking them on top. Everything is there. Okay. Switch on. 
mags on. Rotating beacon. Mixture is rich. Props are forward. Prime, we're just gonna give it four. It's been a while. Crack the throttle. Brakes are set. Everybody's favorite. Can I get a clear prop? We found the culprit. See that little thing right there? What? That's the filter for the hydraulic fluid. I will. And it's supposed to have a little. Uh, I heard ya. We gotta let the people of YouTube see what owning an old airplane is like and all the fun of it, especially after flying or going through major maintenance. So it's leaking right there. Just gotta snug her up. Tire down, boys. Woo! But bam, in 30 seconds, we got our safety wire hooked there and it's all snugged and tight now. Woo! We found our one thing after the project. We're good. And that, boys and girls, is why we do test runs, right? Isn't that what you were just saying? Exactly. Yeah, because all three of us specifically went through both engines and looked for anything that was missing safety wire or cutter pins. All three of us missed it. Pull the chocks and let's rocks. Let's double check, make sure no more leaky leaky. No leaky leaky long time. It looks dry now. You got a big puddle right Well, there. we're not gonna pay attention to this. We're, yeah. So that's metal skirts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, like I said, first time it's gonna be just fine. Just fine. Dr. Phil, any? Any last words before I go take this thing flying? 
Buckle. Bucko, buckle up, buckaroo. <laughs> the man with a ponytail says it's good. All right. Door is locked. Pumping the brakes, make sure we got good brakes. One, ooh, too much. All right, here we go. Clear prop. Sounding good. Sounding good, boys. Zero, zero, 002. See, if I had my fancy Avidyne, it tells me that I'm on ground. It tells me all that stuff. 121.7.2445 is tower. Perfect. All right, we got winds that are a little bit gusty, but they're straight down the runway. Oil pressures are good. Oil temperatures are coming up. Fuel pressures are good. Amps are positive. We got plenty of fuel. Checking all my instruments. We haven't changed that. That's good. That's straight up. Our altimeter is set. Turn and coordinator is on. Nav lights, turn those on. We got our flashy up top is on. Vertical speed zero, those are set. Not an instrument day, so we shouldn't need that. We got some uh, temperature in cylinders and temperature in our exhaust. We are good to go. I'm gonna call ground. Kissimmee ground, this is uh, 131 Delta pop over in the hangars with information Papa looking for a VFR departure to Lakeland. Lake. All right, we are moving. Everything is green. Parking brake. Set altimeter. We check. Belts and harnesses are good. Controls. We'll do another flight control check. Nothing in there. Everything moves that way, goes up. Moves that way, goes up. Perfect. I can see the back. It goes up and down as it's supposed to. I am an Apache, an old one. Kissimmee Tower, 131 Delta Papa, holding short runway 24 with information Papa VFR departure to Lakeland. 131 Delta Papa, we start runway 24, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 24, 131 Delta Papa. All right, now this is a test flight. We are definitely going to abort takeoff if there is any tiny little thing that is not right. We've got a huge amount of runway, so we're good here. Bring our mixtures up. Fuel pumps are on on this one. We have climb out at 85 and get on up there. We got to stay below 3,000. Clear that way, clear this way. Look at that runway, lots of it. Bring it around. All right, I'm going to stop, make sure we got two good engines. Mixture is up. Flaps are set. Trim is set. Bring it up. Oil pressure, fuel pressure, all that is looking really good. Here we go. Make sure our airspeed comes alive. Airspeed's alive already. It's already filling light. There's 60. There's 70. There's 80. Rotate 85. And we're in the air. Everything is still in the green. I love it. I like it. Now we are clearing. There's 300 feet. We're going to get to 500 before we uh, decide to do anything. There's 500. I like it. I knew it would be fine. I wasn't worried at all.